Performing stunts and remembering difficult lines make an actor's job complicated. The emotions it brings up can make it unbearable. The fact that it's all fake can be the worst part. Consider the stars of Houseboat, Cary Grant and Sophia Loren. They wanted to stay together forever but had to walk down a fake aisle. Legal issues and scandals kept them from being able to let art mirror life. Keep watching to learn about the hardest scene Cary Grant ever had to film. Sophia Loren and Cary Grant both ended up Hollywood royalty, but they came from different worlds. One came from actual European nobility, and the other was a simple boy from a small town in England. Sophia's Early Life Sophia Villani Siccolone was born in Rome, Italy, September 20, 1934. She had connections to nobility on her father's side. He abandoned the family when she was a baby, and she only saw him three times in her life. She also saw the impact of WW2 on her country, and she lived in poverty. She began acting in the early 1950s after enrolling in the National Film School of Italy. She got her first role as an uncredited extra when she was 16 and then had a few bit parts. Her breakout role was The Gold of Naples in 1954. She became an international star in 1958 after signing a five-picture contract with Paramount Pictures. Carrie's Early Life Archibald Leach was born in Bristol, England, January 18, 1904. His father had his mother committed to a psychiatric hospital due to her manic episodes and depression. He told his son that she died, and he didn't discover the truth until he was 31. The rest of his childhood was spent at his inattentive grandmother's house while his father was always away. His sanctuary was the movie theater, and that's where he fell in love with acting. Archibald joined the Pender Troop comedians and acrobats when he was 14. His father dragged him home and forced him to return to school, but he got himself expelled to follow his dreams. He moved to America at 16. After decades of odd jobs and flop films, he got a contract with Paramount. They wanted to change his name, saying it didn't sound right in America. They eventually settled on rebranding him as Cary Grant. His big break was starring alongside Mae West in She'd Done Him Wrong. After that, he became one of the biggest names in the golden age of Hollywood. When Sofia Met Carlo Sofia Loren was an Italian gem who worked alongside handsome leading men like Marlon Brando and Richard Burton. She was also introduced to plenty of important behind-the-scenes personas. She met producer Carlo Ponti in 1950 when she was 16 and he was 37. He was on the jury at a beauty contest in Rome and clearly thought she was a winner. They were an official item by the time she was 19. The couple was secretly engaged in 1953. She dreamed of having a legitimate family and raising his two kids. The problem was he wasn't technically divorced from his first wife, Juliana. Italian Catholic society in the 1950s didn't permit divorce. It may have been that technicality that left room open for an affair. When Sophia met Carrie Sophia Loren and Cary Grant met at a cocktail party in Madrid in 1956. He looked as though he'd, quote, just stepped down from the screen and was a dream come true. He was 30 years older than her, but she also found his slightly graying hair attractive. They worked on the film Pride and the Passion together in 1957. They bonded, and a friendship bloomed into love. He'd write her letters and offer gifts. They'd eat dinners together and talk for hours. But being with him would cause a major scandal because she'd have to leave Carlo. She also wanted to avoid what the press did to Ingrid Bergman during her affair. That difficult scene. Cary Grant had to film a few difficult scenes in his career, and one of the most famous was the one where he had to duck under an incoming plane in North by Northwest. But his most difficult scene was challenging on an emotional level. Carrie's affair with Sophia caused a major shift in the casting of the 1958 film The Houseboat. Carlo most likely knew about it and asked for her to replace Betsy Drake as the lead. She was Carrie's third wife and had written the original script. The ending was perhaps the hardest scene Cary Grant ever had to film. He had to pretend to get married to the woman he loved in real life. A Proposal there were plenty of rumors that Carrie did propose to Sophia on the set of The Pride and the Passion. 
In a 2020 interview with Radio Times, she didn't deny that he was a handsome man and a wonderful actor. What she did say was that he didn't propose. It would have been impossible due to their 30-year age gap. She was too young to form clear ideas about love and relationships, and he was still married. Why she chose Ponti Sophia Loren and Carlo Ponti were, quote, married by proxy in Mexico in 1957. This was meant to invalidate his original marriage without getting a divorce. The Vatican condemned it, calling it illegal and accusing them of bigamy. They had to defend themselves for almost a decade until they were exiled and lived in France and Switzerland. He finally got a legal divorce in 1965, making their marriage official. When she left the set of Houseboat, she boasted to Carlo about the yellow roses Carrie had given her. She believes it was a way to test their relationship. If Carlo didn't get jealous, he didn't care. He did and hit her slightly, but it made her feel as if she'd made the right choice. Despite early struggles with fertility, Sophia had two sons, Carlo Jr. in 1968 and Eduardo in 1973, as well as four grandchildren. The couple stayed married until he died in 2007. Carrie wished her the best when he heard the news. Sophia explained why she chose Carlo over him in a 2014 interview with the Sydney Morning Herald. To her, quote, he belonged to another world in America that she would never be able to fit into because of her nationality. She even needed his help with English in her early films. Carrie's Love Life Cary Grant always seemed to know what to say or do to charm women. The persona of James Bond was modeled after him. What he didn't seem to know was how to keep them, whether they were a short-term fling or passionate affair. It wasn't until the end of his life that he seemed to find a compatible partner. He married Virginia Cheryl in 1934. When he married Barbara Hutton in 42, they argued over money and had a contentious divorce. Betsy Drake, of course, was his wife while he had an affair with Sophia. His fourth marriage was to Diane Cannon in 1965. She was the mother of his only child, Jennifer, who was born in 66. He was a loving father and even retired from Hollywood to become a businessman instead. When he changed careers, he also changed as a husband. Diane detailed their relationship in a memoir titled Dear Carrie. She notes an initial attraction, but said that he began to become angry, controlling, and physically withdrawn. They split up in 1986. Carey was married one more time to Barbara Harris. They met on a business trip to London and had a long-distance relationship until she moved to California to be with him. He asked for his daughter's permission before marrying her, and they had a small wedding. His friend, Prince Rainier of Monaco, said he was happier than ever. They stayed together until his death. He once said each marriage was more difficult and that it was almost masochistic of him to keep getting married again. He also seemed to want to keep memories of them all. He had a necklace with a St. Christopher medallion to represent Virginia Cheryl, who was a Roman Catholic, a cross for Barbara Hutton and Betsy Drake, who were Protestant, and a Star of David for Diane Cannon, who was Jewish. It even shows up in a few of his films. Their Last Years one of the last times Sophia and Carrie ever spoke was on the set of the Italian film Two Women. He called her and said he just wanted to say ciao. She believes he must have known it was his last chance. Grant died at age 82 in 1986. He was voted number one in Greatest Movie Stars of All Time by Premiere Magazine. Sophia Loren is 88 years old and worked on her most recent film, The Life Ahead, in 2020. Now it's time to hear from you. What's your favorite tale of a Hollywood affair? Let us know in the comments section below.